statues of Greece and he's mounting his horse which, which name was Bucephalo. Bucephalo. And he was so much in love that he adored this horse so much that actually when the horse died he named a city after his horse. Wow. He buried it in a place and he called the place Bucephalia. Bucephalia. Yeah. Yeah. Alexander the Great, I mean, do you know why he was so important? Do you have any idea? Because every time you hear Alexander the Great, is it something negative or positive in your mind? Uh, positive. Positive. Yes. positive. Yes. Exactly. Why though? Exactly, but why great king? What did he do? Conquered. Conquered, really great. When, when I talk with Greeks, I'm like, yeah, of course he conquered and we like it because we are Greeks. But if, what if we were the conquered ones? <laughs> Would we like it? Not that much, exactly. So the idea is that Alexander the Great, can we just leave space for, yeah, perfect. Uh, Alexander the Great, what he did was uh, indeed go and conquer the world, of course, but back then you wouldn't just go to the gate, knock knock at the door, and people would be really now, would be looking for you, you're not looking forward to meeting you and stuff, come in, of course not. So people who would be totally you know, against him, they would be slaughtered, and he would burn down the whole city. Okay. So he destroyed cities as well, he killed people, but at the same time, the ones that didn't resist to him, he helped them develop, go on a lot. And what he created was actually, he made it all the way to India, from Macedonia, the place here, in just 13 years. One, three, 13. It's a huge thing. I mean, nowadays it takes more time to go to India, <laughs> even more. You know, he made it because he had many, many victorious campaigns against all locals. Alexander the Great, from the age of 15, when he started having battles, till the age of 33, when he died, he never lost a battle in his life, never. So imagine, a handsome man, king, a king man, who never lost a battle, talking about selfish people, eh? He, he felt like he was the conqueror of the world, okay? The king of the world, and actually, indeed, he was. Let's face it, I mean, he's one of the few people of humankind that he could brag on the fact that he was the best, one of the best. He's considered to be one of the best kings ever in the world. Why? Not because he conquered the world, not because he never lost a battle, but what Alexander the Great did was that he created a fusion, a blend of Greek culture and all the local cultures. He never destroyed cultures, and he was in favor of promoting the local cultures as well. For instance, he fostered and he promoted that his soldiers should be married with local women. And this way they would give birth to combinations, eh? to amalgams, to fusions, kids. This is what he did himself. He got married to a local uh, princess from today's Afghanistan, over there. And they had a son, Alexander IV. Alexander IV was half Asian from Afghanistan and half Macedonian, back in the period of 323 before Christ. We're talking about 2400 years ago, okay? And he was the legitimate hire to the throne, that prince. Of course, he didn't make it. He got killed at the age of 13, Alexander IV, his son, by Cassander, one of Alexander the Great's generals who actually got married to Alexander the Great's half-sister called Thessaloniki. And he got married to her and then eight years after Alexander the Great's death, he decided to build a city in 315 and he named the city after his wife and he called it Thessaloniki and here we are. So this is how we are connected, actually. Alexander the Great was born in a city in the Macedonian capital, in the capital of the Macedonian kingdom, 50 kilometers away from here. He, didn't, he was not born here. He didn't know the existence of Thessaloniki because there was no Thessaloniki when he died. Okay, Thessaloniki was built eight years after his death by his son's murderer, uh, Cassandra. This is 
how the story goes. Thessaloniki was the only one who was left from Alexander the Great's family. All the others got killed. She was a little bit, let's say, over 30, and back then, for a princess to be over 30 and unmarried, it was really weird, so we don't really know why. But what Cassander did was that he wanted to get married to her, to make sure that he would be the legitimate heir to the throne, because he got married to the last descendant of the royal dynasty. They had three sons, all of them became kings, and one of them killed Thessaloniki, unfortunately. Because after the death of Alexander the Great, we enter a completely different phase of the empire. Because, you know, he left a huge empire from here all the way to India. Imagine. Then his generals started fighting with each other. Because before he died, they went, you know, to whisper in his ear, tell us who is going to be the, the successor, eh? who is going to follow us, please tell us. And he said, let the best man win. Now, if you ask me, that thing was a little bit stupid. Because all his generals, all of his generals, thought that they were the best ones. So that's why they fought with each other a lot. For next 50 years, we had wars all the time with each other. And then small kingdoms were created, like the kingdom of Egypt, of Ptolemaeus, the general. 13 generations after that, the last queen of Egypt was, do you know her name for sure? Cleopatra, exactly. She was Greek. She was the last descendant, exactly, of the general of Alexander the Great who reigned over it. The last pharaoh were that family. Yeah, she was Greek, indeed. Yes, Greek Macedonian meaning Greek. That's More or less, these are the things for Alexander the Great, just for you to get the idea of why we feel so proud of him. And we talked about Aristotle Square. We will have time to talk more, but you know that Aristotle is considered to be the most important philosopher ever lived. And do you know who was his professor, his teacher? Exactly, Plato. Well done, I mean, great you are. And then who taught Plato? A guy in Athens who didn't write anything, but he was all about talking. It was Socrates. Huh? Socrates lived in Athens. He taught Plato, and Plato taught Aristoteles. Aristoteles was born here, in a city 100 kilometers away from here. But he left Macedonia and he went to Athens. He was the best student of Plato. And everybody thought that he would be the continuation of the school, that he would take the school into his arms once Plato died. But it was not the case. So he felt really bad and he came back to Macedonia. And Philip II found a great opportunity and called him over to teach his son. So, Alexander the Great was taught by Aristoteles. And all the Macedonian court, all noble men, were taught by Aristoteles. I'm saying that for you us to get an idea that the ones who conquered the world, just like Alexander the Great, and all his co-fellows who became generals, were actually educated by the best philosopher ever, called Aristoteles, which was really important. You know, Aristoteles was not the kind of philosopher that, you know, sit on a bench, contemplating the sunset, you know, and talking about death and life. They were, he was more like a scientist. It means that he tackled with everything. Astronomy, engineering, physics, mathematics, everything. So that's why he was that important. Okay, more or less these are things. Let's go all the way to the bus and go on with the tour, okay? okay.